intention of being a group. Uh, my parents are missionaries in Africa, and I lived out there for eight years. And we were, I had just finished college in Nashville, a school called Belmont University, and was really kind of lost as to what I was going to do. I knew I was going to do music, but I had three record deal offers as a solo artist, and they all fell through. Um, and so I was going back up to Michigan, where I'm from originally, uh, to uh, go to Bible school. And just not really knowing what's next, uh, but knowing I wanted to pursue music, also feeling like I needed to show the Lord that music had become such a God to me, uh, that maybe moving away was the best thing that I could do. And so I did three things that I said I would never do, which was move back to Detroit, uh, live with my parents again, and go to Bible college, the same small Bible college that they went to. And it was during um, that time that right before I left, we recorded an album for my parents really to um as a gift for all their supporters and um the uh, uh my sister was signed to a record a record label called curb records and she turned that in and mike curb who owned the label heard that and called her up and said hey uh, i know you're doing your solo thing and i want to support you in that but i think your brother and what you and him and alan are doing is really special and so i want to sign you guys to a record deal and it was out of that that the group started and so um there's there's i think a, a thing that i'm reminded of is you know as you walk into today step into today and do the next best thing do what's in front of you um you know even if you're not really sure what's going to happen like i was very insecure about knowing what my future was where things were headed um, but we just did the next thing we went into the studio and we created these songs i moved back to detroit um, and started Bible college and then God opened these doors that I didn't even see coming. Um, and so, uh, that's one thing I, I, I think, you know, you have highs, you have incredible lows, uh, in life and that's a normal part of life. You know, life ebbs and flows and Jesus promised, uh, that there would be suffering. He promised there would be persecution, but he also promised he would always walk through, uh, things with us and carry us through. And so, um, one of the things that I remember so clearly, uh, which was devastating to me and my wife is uh, when we lost one of our daughters uh, the day she was born and just thinking, what do we do next? And knowing he was there, knowing he's faithful, but just not knowing how to get up in the morning and how to, you know, take the next step. And uh, it was incredibly painful, uh, incredibly difficult to go through. And yet he has, you know, brought us through. Um, Audrey would be 15 this year um, if she were still alive. And so, um, yeah, uh, I, again, I keep coming back to him being faithful and, and good, even when it doesn't feel like it. Um, he is still always, always there. And he's shown me. I, one of the things I do is I look back, uh, especially when I'm in a, a stage of, you know, it could be finances, it could be health it could be issues in the family it could be whatever i go back and i remember and think back to all the times he brought me through when i wasn't sure how he was going to do it and yet he always has he's always brought us through so that's one of the things that i do is just remember the times when i didn't know how i was going to make it to tomorrow and yet he he brought me through so as you wake up this morning for those of you who are watching in pittsburgh or alabama or wherever you are just think back to every time he's always times where you didn't know how you were going to make it. And yet God was faithful. Jesus was faithful. And I, I love what you said, Sydney, to just call out and pray and declare. You know, I, I think about there's a, a Dr. Caroline Leaf. Uh, she has a book. Uh, there's one time I heard her speak and she was talking about when, you know, you think about when Paul says in Romans, renew your mind, renew your mind through scripture. Um, uh, you know, proclaim those words, renew your mind and, and cleanse it. And literally she as a doctor talked about when you think negative thoughts and I, I don't, it's not like, oh, don't think negative thoughts. It's impossible not to. But as you start thinking that and you start speaking that literally she was showing these brain waves that look like dead trees uh, in your mind. And she said, you, when the Bible says to renew, it literally uh, you can, there are brain scans where it changes the imagery in your brain, where it looks like light and it looks like it, it's a completely different picture. You suddenly go from these dark tree type images to these beautiful, 
uh, bright looking uh, images in your brain. And I know that might sound weird, but literally when you said sing a new song, sing a song of praise, it, I, I, it really does something literally in your brain and in your mind and in your heart. You know, and as you speak those words, it's coming from your heart. I think that God literally uses that to change the outlook of how you're seeing things.